If you had spent any amount of time on YouTube since 2018, you probably have come across this video, or this video, or this video. But if for some reason you have no idea who I'm talking about, today's video will be all about Abby Sharp. Abby Sharp, otherwise known as her brand Abby's Kitchen, is a registered dietitian here on YouTube who makes reaction videos commenting on other people's diets, diet trends, and fad diets on the internet. On that note, since in this video we will be talking about a dietitian, so subsequently diet, there will be brief discussions around diet, eating disorders here and there, so content warning for those who need it. Nothing too in-depth, hopefully, but just wanted to give a heads up in case if that is a sensitive topic for some people. Although Abby would more commonly be described as someone along the lines of a food blogger, TV personality, her background as a dietitian gives her a level of authority and credibility, unlike many other fitness or health gurus on the internet. Abby started her YouTube channel in 2011 and started uploading in 2013. At the start, it was your usual recipe videos, segments of herself in TV shows, nothing out of the ordinary. But then in 2018, she uploaded her very first reaction video to Freely the Banana Girl, which blew up her channel. Soon after that, she started this series called Dietitian Reviews, where she reacted and gave commentary to popular health and fitness influencers' diets on the internet. This series propelled her channel in the algorithm. Next thing you know, she was on everyone's recommended page, her analytics skyrocketed, and currently she is sitting at over half a million subscribers. Aside from the tactic of using popular people's names in your videos, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, I think the concept of Abby's channel is brilliant. There is so much myths and misinformation out there surrounding diet, health, and fitness, especially on the internet. Every other day, there is some new fad diet, some crazy diet trend, and I think it is important that we have enough medical professionals on the internet to counteract that. Someone who knows their stuff, someone who knows what they're talking about, and more importantly, have the integrity to put people's health as the top priority. And for a while, Abby fit that mold. She used her knowledge and credibility as a dietitian to call out problematic diet and diet trends on the internet. Like I said, her credentials gave her a degree of authority and power over many other figures in the health and fitness community of YouTube. However, as Uncle Ben once said, with great power comes great responsibility. As Abby continued to gain popularity over the years, she has gotten herself involved in some questionable behavior that is unprofessional at best and downright harmful at worst. One of the first controversies that Abby got herself into was in July of 2020, when she uploaded a video reviewing Greg Duchette's diet. Greg Duchette is a prominent member in the bodybuilding and powerlifting community on YouTube. He is often known for his abrasive, crude tone, kind of a tough love kind of approach, as he is the type to yell into your face saying what you need to hear, whether you like it or not. In the video, Abby very intentionally seems to have misrepresented Greg. Out of all the videos on his channel, she cherry-picked the ones where he was preparing for a fitness competition, therefore was somewhat restrictive in his diet. She even contradicts herself multiple times in the video, claiming that Greg promotes the underconsumption of fats, even though she commends his use of healthy fats in the same video. Now, are there any problematic claims or assumptions made by this channel? Oh boy, where do I even start? Well, number one, I don't like that he explicitly promotes the underconsumption of healthy fats. Okay, so yum. I mean, this meal looks really delicious. We're getting a good dose of protein from the protein enriched wrap and the chicken. We've got some healthy fats from the flax. She also goes on to say how Greg consistently promotes the underconsumption of calories, even though it couldn't be further from the truth. Now, next is that he consistently promotes the underconsumption of calories. Eating too strict, cutting out food groups and stuff, going keto, saying, oh, I can only eat chicken, rice, and broccoli, chicken, tilapia, and some fish and cutting out all sweets, all junk, all yummy, delicious foods in your whole life. 
that doesn't work long term it might work short term if you have extreme discipline you might be able to follow that diet for a little while i could probably do it but i'm very very uh motivated to reach my goals but even i wouldn't want to do it long term why do that when you can have balance balance is not all or nothing balance is eating healthy but still having some foods you like clearly abby and greg have completely different approach when it comes to health and fitness Abby takes a more gentle, slow, educational approach. Greg, on the other hand, has a no BS attitude when it comes to health. Like I said, he will say what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. But in this video, Abby clearly had a bias to make Greg look as this restrictive, hot-headed bodybuilder who yells in your face 24-7. Honestly, overall, this channel is just not a supportive place for those people who are looking to have a healthy relationship with food or their body. Just because you think about what you eat and you care about how you look doesn't mean you have an eating disorder. People seem to think, oh, if you weight lift, oh, if you take anything to improve your performance, you have a body dysmorphia because you want to look better. If you put makeup on in the morning, you have body dysmorphia. Oh, I combed my hair this morning. It's because I have body dysmorphia. I care too much about my appearance. There's nothing wrong with trying to be the best you, okay? I personally don't know if Abby didn't do enough research or intentionally pulled this smear campaign for clout, which it did work. Greg responded to her with multiple videos. They even did a collaboration last year and seems to be in good terms now. But either way, it's not really a good look for Abby as this figure of authority, as this dietitian who often cites to scientific studies and research in her videos to make such a callous mistake. There is a reason she ended up disabling the ratings in her video. It was quite unprofessional. At some point, Abby even accuses Greg of promoting disordered eating, orthorexic behavior. Eating a cupcake does not make you a bad person. And eating an apple does not make you inherently a good person. This kind of language is at the root of orthorexic eating patterns, and it really needs to stop. But there is no proof that Greg suffers from any form of disordered eating, let alone an eating disorder or orthorexia. If anything, him and his fan base claim that he promotes balance and flexibility when it comes to eating, even for a bodybuilder like himself. If you're someone who has been watching Abby for a while, this is not something that is new from her. Over her time on YouTube as a dietitian, reacting to other people's diets, she very clearly has developed a bias towards people that are thin, conventionally attractive, or likes to eat healthy. She critiques their diet incredibly harshly, nitpicks every little thing, and is very quick to throw around labels like eating disorder, orthorexia, or binge. These are serious accusations to make about someone, especially from a professional like herself. An example that comes to mind is Stephanie from the channel Nutty Footy Fitness. Stephanie is a fitness YouTuber who is well known for doing these insane food challenges and yet managing to maintain a lean, shredded physique. The reason for that is that Stephanie is genetically gifted to have a very low sensitivity to carbohydrates and fats. It is something that she has been very transparent about. She is just someone who needs to eat a lot of food to gain weight compared to the average person. But when it came to reacting to her diet, Abby continues to wrongfully accuse her of binging, of having a cheat day, almost shaming her for the amount of food she's eating, going, Oh, it looks like a binge, but I'm not assuming anything. But she looks like she's binging. I don't know. I'm still learning about Stephanie. It still does feel like a lot of food at once in comparison to her day one breakfast. Now, I am still just learning about Stephanie, so I don't know if she just has like a normal hearty appetite or if this is like a cheat day or an eating challenge situation. For most people, one or two tablespoons would be sufficient for a balanced snack and 20 tablespoons might look a little bit like a binge. You know, hopefully she is just listening to her body's needs rather than pulling a typical cheat day stunt. I think the girl legit ordered everything on the menu and it looks like she did a pretty good job polishing it all off. I mean, down to the balsamic glaze on her plate. So we have a layered smoothie, pancakes, avocado toast on a waffle, chicken sandwich with salad, cheese tortellini, and a pistachio donut. That is a total of five lunch entrees and a dessert. 
So I am a bit concerned that this is teetering in kind of eating challenge cheat day territory. This scene is playing out exactly like any mukbang or cheat day challenge. And in the context of her day with the big oatmeal breakfast, peanut butter, huge brunch, more peanut butter, and now all of this, it is definitely feeling potentially problematic. But when it comes to individuals who very clearly have an issue with food, such as people that are overweight or obese, Abby takes a much more lenient approach, tweets them with kitty clubs, and almost panders to them. Her video where she reacts to Amberlynn Reid is a prime example of this. Now, for those who don't know much about Amberlynn, I don't really want to spend too much time on this because it really is a rabbit hole that keeps going. There are literal icebergs that are made on this woman, hours of videos made on her, channels that are solely dedicated to keeping up with her antics. But long story short, Amberlynn is a universally hated figure here on YouTube who started off as a weight loss channel only to turn around and gain 200 pounds within the span of 5 years. She is notorious for doing these mukbangs where she eats copious amounts of food on camera. But if there is anything I want you to take away from this is that the majority of the hate that Amberlynn receives has nothing to do with her weight. Over the past 8 years that she has been on YouTube, the amount of drama and scandals that she has gotten herself into is astronomical. I'm talking things like scamming, transphobia, racism, false rape allegations, abusing and neglecting animals, or in general just being dishonest to her audience through lying and trolling. Mm. I have a dietitian, y'all. <laughs> As a result of this, her comment section is generally quite toxic. A lot of people, a lot of her fans are fed up with her, understandably so. But for some reason, Abby does not address any of this in her video. She instead paints Amberlynn as this victim, and apparently people are only hating on her because she is fat. Amberlynn's mukbangs are, dare I say, healthier? than most YouTubers all in 10,000 calorie challenges. But yet, if you compare the comment sections of her mukbangs compared to many others, like let's say Always Hungry, Amber Lynn bears the brunt of the disgust and hate. Let's just look at one of the most popular comments on Amber Lynn's mukbang versus one from lifestyle YouTuber Always Hungry. Both of these people post about wanting to get or stay fit, but the primary difference is that Livia Adams from Always Hungry is already in a socially desirable body, and Amber Lynn is not. It's very clear that the negative public perception of Amber Lynn's content is unique because of her size. So are internet trolls the reason for Amber Lynn's extreme weight gain since she started her journey online? Well. According to the research, and simply by looking at the comment section of even just one of her videos, I would say that this is a real possibility. Comparing Amberlynn to someone like Always Hungry, who to my knowledge has barely gotten into any controversies other than her questionable eating habits, is missing the bigger picture. This is why context is important. Again, you don't have to dig much deeper to find out why people are so hostile to Amberlynn. You don't even have to go on somewhat cryptic websites like 4chan or Reddit. On YouTube, there are plenty of content made dissecting all of her antics, some of which have garnered millions of views. Yet, how Abby is able to miss all of this is beyond me. This is even more harmful when you consider the fact that whenever Anne Boleyn is forced to take accountability, she shifts the blame onto her audience. It is the haters. It is the comments. It is because she is fat. And here, Abby is essentially pandering to her, enabling her, by saying, it's okay, keep doing what you're doing, even going as far as comparing her mukbangs to eating disorder treatments. In the context of disordered eating behaviors, which is what I would characterize some of the mukbang binging to simulate, the feeling of being watched by followers on YouTube 
is kind of similar to what might happen in real eating disorder recovery programs where meals are supervised by a member of your treatment team. Proportion sizes are not particularly big. In fact, at times, they might just not be big enough, and that can set you up for a binge really quickly. Saying to a 500-pound woman who admits to having a binge eating disorder and food addictions that she is not eating enough is a recipe for disaster. It's virtually the same as handing an alcoholic keys to the bar. I previously mentioned how Abby tends to label anyone who practices even the most lenient forms of restriction with orthorexia, eating disorder, or binging, even when there is no evidence of that individual suffering from any of this. Abby is a registered dietitian. As far as I know, she doesn't have a background in psychology or psychiatry. Even if she did, it is virtually impossible to know the full scope of someone's eating habits from one YouTube video. Counting calories, wanting to eat healthy, wanting to lose weight does not automatically mean that you have an eating disorder. It is important to note that Abby herself has suffered from disordered eating and orthorexia in the past, which is something she has been very open about, and I can definitely sympathize with that. I myself have struggled with disordered eating. However, it does make me wonder how much of these comments and accusations that she makes about other people is simply her projecting from her own disordered past. Going back to her video on Greg Duchette, Abby at one point calls out Greg for labeling foods as good or bad. Now, third is the constant dichotomization of foods as good and bad. A chocolate bar is bad food. An apple is good food. You want to argue with me all day? Go ahead, you're just being stupid. When we classify food into these distinct categories, we give them moral value. I'm a dietitian. There is no doubt in my mind that foods are not nutritionally equal, but we can make them morally equal by dropping this kind of language. Eating a cupcake does not make you a bad person, and eating an apple does not make you inherently a good person. This kind of language is at the root of orthorexic eating patterns, and it really needs to stop. But the thing is, Greg never said that you are a bad person for eating a cupcake or a good person for eating an apple. All he said was that, objectively, an apple is better for you than a chocolate bar. This moral value that she is assigning to food is simply her projecting her own insecurities around food. Although I am not a professional, I do not know Abby personally, I often do wonder if her own relationship with food is healthy. While she is out here calling out Greg for labeling a chocolate bar as bad, on her own blog, her recipes are constantly labeled with essentially health buzzwords, sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, low sugar, high protein. Abby is often referred to by many as like an anti-diet dietitian. She is a huge advocate for intuitive eating, going as far as pandering to the fat acceptance and haze community, which stands for health at every size. But then in the same breath, she would turn around and tear someone's diet down to shreds, saying things like, oh, this is good, but needs a bit more protein could use a bit more veggies, should add in some fruit for antioxidants. While she does provide a disclaimer and trigger warning at the start of every video and oftentimes throughout the video, its effects are negligible when you as an influencer, someone with a level of authority, is putting it out to the world. Although I have nothing against trigger warnings, I provide them myself in my videos, Abby's excessive use of trigger warnings can often come off as condescending and exude this holier-than-thou attitude. She also often goes on about how difficult it is to watch something or how triggered she is. Oh, this one's gonna be hard to watch. And may even be triggering for some of my viewers who are watching. I mean, I know that it's definitely triggering for me. I am not even in a larger body, and even I found it hard to get through a lot of Greg's videos. I'm sorry, but if you as a dietitian are finding it difficult or are getting triggered by people who may not have the best relationship with food, that is on you. 
And what is even more absurd is that, despite Abby's pedantic use of trigger warnings and politically correct language, many people are getting even more triggered by her, with some even actively watching her to trigger their ED. The bottom line is that you cannot please everyone, especially on the internet. One of the reasons people specifically seek out professionals, whether it is online like Abby Sharp or in person like seeing a doctor, is to get an unbiased objective view. And objectively speaking, this intuitive eating, not labeling foods as good or bad, is not for everyone. Again, if Abby were to rebrand herself to say an eating disorder specialist or like an eating disorder recovery dietitian, I would have no problem with her approach. I probably wouldn't even be making this video. But advising people to eat whatever, whenever, however, when we're currently at an obesity epidemic is irresponsible at best and downright dangerous at worst. People don't get to be in two, three, four, or even 500 pounds through listening to your body or honoring hunger cues. You cannot intuitively eat when you have a dysfunctional relationship with food. And the funny thing is, despite being so adamant on intuitive eating, Abby oftentimes can't seem to stay consistent with that narrative either. Let's look at one of the very first videos of Abby that pretty much got her viral and to some extent got her to where she is at today. Her reaction to Freely the Banana Girl. Now, I know Freely tends to be a bit of a controversial figure, but she is one of the very first people on this platform to push intuitive eating. Her diet may seem limiting to some in terms of variety, but it is nowhere near restrictive. If anything, she has always promoted to eat as much as you care for, as long as you're full, which is the pinnacle of intuitive eating. Let's see what Abby has to say to that. Now, this girl is like totally whack. This girl's crazy, like actually bananas. That's basically the only way I can describe her. When your breakfast doesn't even fit into a damn flower vase and you still have like half a smoothie to go, you know, you probably have overdone it on the portion size. That amount of pears on that platter there, it looks like what you would serve at a banquet hall for an entire wedding party of like 200 people as like a nice little nice little fruit plate. That is an excessive amount of pears going in. I'm, um, not to mention the social aspect. I mean, this girl probably will never go out on a date because who the fuck wants to sit with a girl who's just gonna be eating a blender size smoothie? It's just not gonna happen. Sorry, Freely. I don't know about your dating life, but I would say that's not looking good for you. So, yeah. It's pretty much over 10 minutes of Abby dragging Freely. And like I said, the internet loves to hate on Freely. But don't you think as a dietitian, a professional, a figure of authority, Abby should at least try to be the bigger person and not attack her character by using ad hominem? Abby has a strange relationship with fruit, out of all things. When reacting to Miles from Healthy Crazy Cool, another vegan YouTuber who eats mostly intuitively, Abby cut out the first portion of his breakfast where he had fruit. Yeah, she reviewed my diet, but she cut the fruit out. And when I say cut fruit out, I don't mean like, oh, I had an, an apple for a snack or I put one banana in my smoothie. No, she cut nine pieces of fruit out of the video. I am a big promoter of whole fruits. Don't forget we're living in a world where people are addicted to refined sugar. Um, so to call people out for eating too much fruit, which Abby does consistently and has done to many vegans in the in the other videos that she's reviewed of other popular vegan YouTubers. So when I realized that the video had been manipulated, I sent her an email and asked her specifically, why did you cut the fruit out? I was actually worried that you were gonna criticize me just like you have to every other vegan for eating a lot of fruit in one go. I actually asked her about a few things that I kind of had a problem with, gave her my thoughts on certain things. I was very specific to make sure that I put the why did you cut out my fruit meals in a separate paragraph so that it wasn't kind of missed within the rest of the email. It was completely ignored. She replied to everything else but completely ignored the fact that she had cut fruit eating out of my video. While it is unknown as to why Abby has done this, Till this day, she has not directly responded to this. On the other hand, she commends someone like Whitney Simmons for having refined sweets at the end of the day. World, my current obsession, hold the cone from Trader Joe's. Look at this. Little mini guy. 
love it. Can't finish the day off without not having a sweet. You know what I'm saying? You know I need a sweet. So I get you, girl. I feel you on the sweet thing. And it really makes me so happy to see Whitney's attitude towards sweets. Furthermore, Abby has gotten into quite a bit of controversy in the past for limiting her own child's fruit intake. In this highlight reel that she posted, she said, now that baby E is getting older and showing clear preferences, mainly to fruit to be honest, I'm being more purposeful in implementing the division of responsibility. So baby E gets one serving of dessert, in this case, peaches. Once they're gone, that's it. If you are such a huge proponent of intuitive eating, why wouldn't you offer food to your child who is wanting them intuitively? Children and babies are like the experts in intuitive eating. They do not care about macros, about nutrition, whether it is good for them or not. They will just want to have what feels good to them. If it was refined sugar or processed food, then yeah, I would understand putting up some restrictions. But it is fruit, out of all things. So, as you can tell, Abby's philosophy towards intuitive eating is confusing to say the least. So to Abby, intuitively wanting to have refined sweets like ice cream is fine, but wanting to have whole foods like fruits is not. So you're only allowed to eat intuitively as long as your way of eating matches Abby's. Hmm. Yeah, that <laughs> does not sound like intuitive eating to me. It is strange how Abby has built an entire following on this somewhat of a broken philosophy. Her comment section is just an echo chamber with no one ever questioning her. Honestly, I don't think she personally even believes in this crap. It may just be a marketing ploy for her. As a couple of years ago when veganism was trending, she made videos on vegan YouTubers like Freely, Fully Raw Christina, High Carb Hannah, and now I guess intuitive eating is on the trend so she's making sure to jump on that bandwagon. But the thing about having somewhat of a weak sense of morality is that you can be easily swayed by any other motivation, like monetary gain. It is evident from her videos that Abby desperately tries to stay out of any drama by catering to all needs through her strict adherence to status quo and maintaining a squeaky clean corporate image which makes her incredibly monetizable on YouTube. These days, literally every video that she puts out has an affiliate. She always seems to be sponsored by everything. While some questioned her integrity of taking sponsorships, especially of food items, as a dietitian reflects a major conflict of interest, as some of the things that she had been sponsored by in the past has come under a lot of scrutiny. One of them was this video where she was sponsored by Maple Lodge Farms to promote processed deli meats. Today I've partnered with Maple Lodge Farms who sponsored this video to bring you three easy, low carb, high protein, keto friendly snacks with minimal assembly required. This video got so much hate that she ended up unlisting it from her channel. The comments are still up and they're all questioning her integrity of being a dietitian, yet promoting processed deli meats which are classified as a group 1 carcinogen by WHO, meaning it's directly linked with causing cancer. Next was when Abby was sponsored by Cheerios. Yes, boxed, ultra-processed Cheerios by General Mills Co. Additionally, there is also the factor of glyphosate, which is one of the most common herbicides that is used on grains. According to WHO, it is classified as a probable carcinogen, while glyphosate can be found in little amounts in all grains like oats, rice, bread, the brand of Cheerios that Abby is promoting literally went through a class action lawsuit because of the amount of glyphosate it contained. Don't you think as a dietitian, Abby should at least know about this? And more importantly, have the integrity to not promote it to her audience? One of the most recurring sponsorship on her channel is this protein bar brand called Built Bar. Again, aside from it being pretty much nothing but a processed, artificial junk food bar with high protein, interesting how she called out Greg for calling a chocolate bar bad, it contains erythritol among many other artificial ingredients 
which is a sugar alcohol that has been known to have side effects of digestive issues, something that Abby actually talked about on her channel. One of the common issues people have with some sugar substitutes and artificial sweeteners is that they may cause digestive issues. This is particularly true for sugar alcohols, aka sweeteners like sorbitol, maltitol, mannitol, xylitol, lactitol, sorbitol, etc which are really notorious for causing gas, bloating, and pretty serious diarrhea. Erythritol has also been found to work as a pesticide for ants. Furthermore, Build Bar has gotten quite a lot of flack over the last couple of years for not taking proper precautions in their factories for COVID, even going through a lawsuit because of it. Yet, there is Abby still promoting this brand to her predominantly young, impressionable audience. Again, if Abby were just your typical health and wellness influencer, I probably wouldn't have that much of an issue with this. But as a dietitian, as this figure of authority, it really comes off as unprofessional for her to keep doing these sponsorships that go directly against her brand. It honestly reminds me of back when doctors were selling out by cigarette brands and were promoting smoking, or when health professionals from the American Heart Association, the ones whom you were supposed to trust, received fundings from soft drink companies for their studies. And just like many of these so-called professionals, this major conflict of interest makes you question Abby's legitimacy. A bit of a disclaimer before I get on with this section of the video. Everything that I will be saying here is alleged. There is no definitive proof of anything. But there is substantial evidence suggesting that Abby may not even be qualified to do what she does. Abby claims to have completed her course in the Ontario College of Dietitians in Canada. Yet, if you were to look her up in Canada's Registry of Dietitians, nothing shows up. Furthermore, according to this article by Global News, Abby didn't even finish her degree. The article goes on to list individuals who dropped out of higher education yet are doing pretty well for themselves. However, unlike many of these people who are currently in a completely different career path to their degree, Abby still continues to benefit from her label of being a dietitian. That is what she is known for. In every video, she uses the word in order to leverage herself from others. I think it is quite disingenuous to benefit from something you allegedly didn't even finish studying for. Even if she did have just an undergrad degree, that would make her experiences as a dietitian limited. Currently, she is listed as a media registered dietitian on her LinkedIn profile for a course that she completed over a decade ago. There has been a lot of rumors about her lack of experience, with many professionals even questioning her credibility. And this is something that is personal to me, but I used to religiously watch Abby a couple of years ago. I'm talking every upload. While she was pretty entertaining to watch, you know, she has experience being on TV, so she comes off as very natural and authentic on camera. Her videos are well put together, it looks like a TV show. But in terms of actual knowledge, there really wasn't much that I learned from her. Like her knowledge surrounding food and health felt very basic. It's just the same thing over and over like add protein and fats to your meals to make them more satiating. The hunger crusher combo that she calls it. The thing is, we don't know if Abby really is credible. Unless she comes up tomorrow and flashes her certifications to the world, we'll never be sure of her qualifications as a dietitian. But even then, that doesn't really prove her experience in this field, which at times can be even more important than your education. Which brings me to the final point of this video. Health and wellness is a lucrative market with an industry that is worth trillions. And with social media and the internet, there are tons of leeways and loopholes in this industry that makes it even less regulated. Even with these so-called experts and professionals, at times even their credibility and legitimacy is questionable. I really don't want this video to be seen as simply me hating on Abby Sharp. That is like the last thing I would want you to take away from this video. And like I said at the start, I genuinely like the concept of Abby's channel. 
I think in a platform where health and fitness has become synonymous with aesthetics and washboard abs, Abby provides a breath of fresh air with her more scientific and educational approach. However, in an algorithm that rewards quantity over quality, cares more about being ad-friendly than the well-being of their consumers, it can make it difficult for legitimate professionals who genuinely want to help people to succeed on this platform. And the ones that do manage to succeed seems to do so because of their aesthetic and entertainment qualities rather than their capabilities as a professional. Although Abby always opens her videos with a disclaimer that her content is for educational and entertainment purposes only and always encourages her audience to seek a healthcare provider for their own unique needs, it honestly feels futile given the state of the world. In many parts of the world, like the US where I assume most of our viewers are from, many are lacking access to basic healthcare needs and are turning online to treat their symptoms, where professionals like Abby triumph over most, even if they are sketchy at best or just plain irresponsible at worst. While I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life, if you are going to seek healthcare information from the internet, all I ask is take it with a grain of salt, even if it seems credible, always question everything, have a healthy amount of skepticism, and I know this sounds harsh, but if your dietitian needs a dietitian of their own to sort out issues, then maybe they're not as credible as you think they are. Just my humble opinion. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, especially if you made it till the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to eat your fruit, unlike Abby. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next one.